there are more than 6 million CCTV cameras in the UK, more per head than any other country on the planet. Operating 24-7, these cameras are becoming increasingly important in catching criminals. Everything from theft to armed robbery and fights. From antisocial behaviour to really dangerous behaviour, all caught on camera. I'm Nick Wallace. I've been reporting on crime for more than a decade. I'm going onto the front line to see how CCTV is helping police put criminals behind bars. Tonight, thousands of drinkers on the streets leads to mayhem in Chester. Ooh. One man's camera crusade against the thugs taking over his town. Just the level of violence that these people are, are doing to each other. I mean, who does that to people? And when trouble flares on the streets of London, it's up to CCTV to identify the guilty. No, wrong man. Wrong man. They were victims. A night out in town can be the perfect start to a weekend, but when drink is involved, trouble is never far away. Britain's successful nighttime economy comes as a price. More than a million crimes were linked to alcohol last year, many of them caught on camera. Some of the worst behaviour that I've witnessed has been fuelled by police. Trying to stop it takes a cool head. Camera control 5-1. In CCTV control rooms across Britain, it's the operator's job to keep an eye on those who may have had one too many. Oh, no, we'll see. And helps the police keep the streets safe. Friday night in Rotherham, South Yorkshire, has a reputation for being a wild affair. With last orders approaching, drinkers are starting to spill out of the bars onto the street. Are you, gonna go, are you guys going home now? For CCTV operators Martin Franks and Dave Rhodes, it's the start of another busy shift. Victor Romeo and the officer town centre. Yeah, we've got fight in uh, on Market Street. Looks like we've got three or four males. I've just radioed for police. From their control room, they can talk to door staff at the bars and police officers on the ground. The, the police going to a job need to know information like, you know, how many, what's happening, who's done what, all this sort of thing. Been doing it for 17 years now, and I've seen most things. You still get excited because it's, you know, it's a, I don't know, the thrill of the chase, whatever you like. But it, after all, it's, I still find it exciting. It's 11.30, a crucial time of night for CCTV control. Already, two men are on Martin's radar. Them two lads that got thrown out of one of the pubs that we're following are moving down towards another pub. Exchange, Cameroon. Yeah, these are the two lads that, uh, if they try getting into you, uh, I'd suggest you knock them back. Door staff take Martin's advice and tell the men to go home. But they decide on a pit stop. Urinating at the side of the street. Once they've had a few drinks, camera is the last thing on their mind. See if we've got any officers downtown. Yeah, we've got a male urinating at the side of the street. I uh, wonder if you could go and have a chat with him. Responding to Martin's call is Sergeant Claire Learard. Uh, one's got a black shirt, the other one's got a, a light coloured shirt. It's a light coloured shirt guy that's uh, done the dirty deed. Martin keeps an eye on the cops as they detain the man who's got plenty to say. I'm the baddest person you'll ever meet in your life. When he checks out on the radio, you're going to want to, to, you're gonna want to grab him get off the plane. He's got his book of tickets out, like, and he's, he's going to give him a ticket. It's normally a fine of uh, some description. Put your money away. Put your money away. The man's unfazed by the fine he's facing. That's how much money means to me, look. Gonna pay that fine, look. And he has a strange way of showing it. No, it's not doing it for me either, mate. The money-hungry man's less pleased when he's banned from the city. You can't come back to Rotherham. You've had a wee on the pavement. Back in control, Martin spots something far more serious. Papa one, Victor Romeo. Outside a club, a girl's argument 
is turning violent. Yeah, we got any officers uh, outside Trist, looks like a couple of females are having a go at each other. Yes, yes, received. Yeah, Papa One, these are kicking off again now. Oh, they're here, they're here. The fight's already over when the police arrive, and in the confusion, they're struggling to work out who's been fighting who. Yeah, stand by. But Martin and Dave can watch the footage back to see if the troublemakers are still around. Basically, the girl with the red hair shoves the girl onto the floor with blonde hair. Well, you know the girl with the white dress on that um, ended up with a ripped strap? I'm just trying to spot her now, mate. Yeah, Roger, um, you see the, the female to your right? She started a fight with a young female, I believe, that's been spoken to around the corner, and then the lass to your left got involved thereafter. With their names on the record, four troublemakers are given their marching orders. You know, if they're this drunk at uh, half past 11, what are they going to be like at half past two, three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it could probably could create well, even yeah. more problems. Sit down, love, come on. Get this way. Get me off. The last fighting girl is taken to the police van to calm down. Bless them. Coming up, a boozy day at the races leads to trouble on the streets. That's starting to get nasty. A secret operation to protect an ancient landmark from an age-old problem. Survived the Reformation, it's gone through all that history, and people just want to come and uh, try and destroy it with urine. And when a couple's viciously attacked, it's up to CCTV to find the thugs responsible. Whiskey Zulu 29, there are six males that you need to stop. It's races day in Chester, in the northwest of England. One of the biggest and booziest events of the year. With 30,000 people descending on the city centre, Chester's CCTV control room is on high alert for trouble. Camera control 5-1. CCTV operator Paul Hunt will be keeping a watchful eye on the huge crowds. If you see this group return, can you let us know? He's been doing the job for 12 years. It is the calm before the storm at the moment. There's, a, there's an awful lot of human traffic coming into the city, um, filtering into the city's pubs. There's a, an increased chance of um, disorder and stuff like that. People being silly. On the ground, the police are out in force, looking for anyone who might spoil the party. Some of them have been drinking since before the races started at one o'clock, so goodness knows what kind of state they're in. I have a feeling we're about to find out. It's not long before Paul spots cops with their hands full, trying to arrest a man spoiling for a fight. They're just trying to get him in handcuffs so that he's securely restrained and he can't harm himself or the police. The man's fighting back, and with a crowd starting to gather, the cops are outnumbered. Camera control to any police in the area of the city, over. First to respond is Sergeant Andy Burridge. Camera control 5-1, Andy. Um, we've certainly seen the male being restrained. There's always the chance that, you know, something might flare off. On the ground, the situation's threatening to boil over. The man's refusing to go quietly. And his friends are determined to get involved. Paul watches the backs of the cops as they try to restore order. You can see how things can flare up quite easily. Trying to keep a good wide angle view. Walk away, fellas, please. The crowd are finally starting to get the message. But Paul's watching one man who's coming back for more. 
Well, this chap in the pink top doesn't seem to want to go. You know, he's been heavily involved in the, the fracas we've just seen. The police have had enough. The man who started the trouble is heading for the cells. Whilst his friend who got involved is given an order banning him from the city centre. I'll try and get him off the street as quick as possibly um, to, you know, to, to calm the fire. Paul tracks the man to make sure he leaves. My dad told me that when the Second World War came to a, a, a close and it was the, you know, the victory in Europe day and all that, all the people of Chester converged on the race course course and there was 180,000 people plus apparently uh, and there was no trouble. Now you get 20 to 20 or 30,000 people go to a race meeting and there's loads of trouble everywhere. It's 10 o'clock. The city's still packed and the clowns are out. Hours of drinking are causing more and more people to misbehave. I've seen enough. I've seen enough, that's what I've seen. Paul's got his eye on one man in particular. So we've just observed a male having a wee um, against a shop in the city, um, about five foot from some of the public toilets. So we're just going to see if a police patrol can get to him. He's just acting like a bit of fool fool, isn't he? Bouncing, I think it's called, as I've always referred to it as. As police move in, the man appears to sober up fast. Taking off his sunglasses and leaving his friends to sort it out, he tries to slip away. But he's still firmly in Paul's sights. His shirt's untucked, part of it's stuck in his belt. Um, he's facing the camera now. We're following him and police patrols are just about to stop him. There we go. Back, Dave, I can confirm 100%. That is the male, however. Now he's been caught on camera, he may think twice. Take his details um, and then he'll be summoned and given a fine um, up to around about £200 for having a wee. So that's going to be an expensive piddle. A lot of revellers have been drinking for over 12 hours. And the mood on the city streets is starting to sour. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go now. Let's go. Let's go. As the police break one fight up, Paul spots another one kicking off. Oh, there's some males uh, appear to have been evicted from one of the pubs. A few punches being thrown. It's starting to get nasty. The police are still a few minutes away. Whiskey, whiskey Zulu, ice. Paul's their only eyes on the ground. You've got a male with a blue T-shirt and a blue baseball cap. There's a, a stocky chap with a white T-shirt wearing shorts. He's, he's been seen to elbow somebody. They're definitely the main ones from me watching it once. Having identified the ringleaders, Paul tracks them trying to get away. But armed with their descriptions, the cops move in and arrest them. Camera control, that's received. It sounds like you've got two with you. There are some outstanding. We're just reviewing the footage again uh, with some of your colleagues. We'll get back to you. Uh, with a little look, we'll be able to pick up on them. In Paul's control room, he can monitor 182 different cameras. But he's not the only one in the city tonight with access to CCTV. Even Chester Cathedral's being watched from above. Every weekend, its cameras help tackle a problem as old as the building itself. 
Drinkers using the ancient building as a glorified public toilet is an ongoing scourge. Fighting to stamp it out, the cathedral has its own CCTV cameras and control room. Yeah, two males, uh, possibly three, urinating in the archway at the moment. Cathedral Constable Chris Jones is a man on a mission. Public urination is just not tolerated. It not only um, is unsightly, but it also deteriorates the fabric and the, and the well-being of the city. Tonight, he's working with the police on a special operation, codename Kazoo. The third male is just leaving Abbey Square now. Those stopped can expect a fine or even a court summons. It's not a nice thing to happen, unpleasant, and it makes a horrible stench. But it's also a, a, it's a listed building. It's a grade one listed monument. Um, it actually turns the sandstone from a, a nice red color to a black. It survived the Reformation. It's gone through all that history, and people just want to come and uh, try and destroy it with urine. They don't understand the cost of what they're doing. It's gone midnight, and yet another unwanted visitor is on Chris's radar. Cathedral Constable 5, one male. Yeah, one male. He's just hidden behind a lamppost at the moment. If you can uh, make your way there and catch him in the act. There's, uh, there's one or two that, that make their way round, think they're not being watched, and they're actually face to face with a sign that says, you are being watched on CCTV. Might want to put that away. Sorry, I do apologize. The two police officers have just given him a, a polite talking to. It is an offence to urinate in a public place, all right. I'm, I'm sure you're aware of that, OK? Yeah, it's unacceptable as well. We want to look after it. While people are urinating on it, it's causing no, decay and everything in the walls, hence the need for an operation specifically to target people urinating at the moment, OK? <laughs> I didn't mean that. But that's what you're doing. You, know, you're getting your genitals out in a public place, that's what you're doing. Yeah, urinating, so, so but that's what you're it. doing. Obviously, I pointed out the offence to you. I'm not going to okay. shake your hand because you've just been peeing <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just a nice I'll, gesture. I'll take, I'll I take, I'll, I'll take a rain check on that one. I perfectly understand why you didn't. Yeah. OK, I'll also explain to you that you've been captured on camera tonight. There are CCTV cameras all around the cathedral, OK? The apologetic man is the eighth person to be snared by Op Kazoo tonight. It's a rusty night. Okay. Bye now. And he won't be the last. And with toilets about 200 feet away, it's really, pardon the French, taking the piss. It's 2.30 in the morning. In nearby Northwich, the clubs are kicking out and the casualties are mounting. Watching over the last revellers left standing is CCTV operator Peter Sego, who's got his eyes peeled for trouble. I've just seen something else, actually, Dave. A man and his girlfriend are being attacked by a large mob. Whiskey Zulu 29 to PC Anderson. The girl tries to protect her boyfriend, who's already taken a savage beating. Whiskey Zulu 29, there are six males that you need to stop. As the thugs flee, one comes back for a last sickening assault. Well, don't let him walk off. The police arrive and the suspects scatter, but are quickly rounded up. It would appear that you have got everybody that has been involved in that. It's up to Peter to replay the footage and ID them. We're pretty sure that we've got everybody that's been involved, but we just need to be sure to what extent they've been involved. Punching people is one thing, but jumping on people's heads is another. One by one, the men are picked out. Both of those males have been seen to jump on a male on the floor. Within minutes, they're cuffed. Yeah, Whiskey Zulu, there's a male on his phone next to uh, PC Anderton. Yes, he can be detained. Whiskey Zulu 29, there's a male with a red top on and brown trousers. He can definitely be detained. But the CCTV tells a different story about one of the other men in cuffs. I don't think he's been involved. I'm going to go back and have a look again. Um, you can see him backing off from that group. 
Yeah, he legs it off, doesn't he? I don't think he's involved. The innocent man is released. So there are no outstanding people that you need to get now. Five men are arrested on suspicion of assault. For Peter, it's a satisfying end to a vicious attack. It's horrible. It's sometimes horrible to watch, you know, but luckily nobody's got away with it, and that is purely down to CCTV evidence. Coming up, brawling on the streets of London. One man's CCTV mission to clean up his town. Just the level of violence that these people are, are doing to each other. You wouldn't treat any your worst enemy like this. And a fatal shooting prompts one of the biggest CCTV manhunts in history. Rico was such a good boy that he must, he must get justice. The streets of London can be dangerous after dark. When trouble flares, the capital's thousands of CCTV cameras play a vital role in raising the alarm. Lifting the lid on the mayhem that can strike when people have had too much to drink. In Lambeth, this police control room is where the emergency calls come in. Can you just call up CCTV? Ask them if they've still got the original suspect on camera then. Sergeant Callum Roy and dispatch operator Sapna Oram use live feeds to help officers respond on the ground. You'll get dozens of calls. Unless you've got it on CCTV, it's just a call. But when you see the impact of it there, it makes it a bit more real, a bit more urgent, because you're actually seeing the incident. It's four in the morning. They're watching two couples whose arguments turning nasty. There's a head wobble coming, isn't yeah. there? There's a head wobble there. I'll pick her up and take her home. Because the club's obviously throwing out, isn't it? For Sergeant Roy, it's an all too familiar sight. I'm sure it's going up and down every high street in the country at the moment and outside every nightclub. Oh. You could have got a one up there. I think she went too far in front of him. Oh, dear. Even with the cops acting as peacemakers, neither couple is ready to leave quietly. Looking at the, the, the boyfriend there, he looks Thank like you. he's now starting to be a bit macho and a bit protective, and he's getting all aggressive now, and his body language is pushing into a... Finally, the police convince the couple to call it a night. Yeah. Think we've got to the bottom of that one. As the night wears on, there's another incentive for troublemakers to leave the streets. The weather. Oh, it's raining. It just started, isn't it, while they were stood there? Yeah. Instead of lurking around, they'll be going home this time. <laughs> but the rain's not cooling everyone down. It's like the third time he's been picked up by the cameras, that chap. An aggressive man the cameras have been monitoring is spoiling for a fight. No, there you go. Can we get you just running to that? The trouble escalates as his friend joins in. Oh. This has just got serious. That's the one that was holding the blazer out. As the two victims are being forced to defend themselves, the police arrive. No, wrong man. Wrong man. They were victims. The, the two white guys appear to be victims. And he's the instigator, the one that's going away. He's the one. The police didn't see how the fight started, so they put everyone in cuffs. It's up to Sergeant Roy to tell them who to arrest. Units unseen for info from watching up here in the control room. The, um, the two white lads there, they actually appeared to be victims. The one in the stripy top was trying to break it up at one point. Um, the main instigator seemed to be the RC3 chap up against the grills at the back. And they had a little shorter friend with him, which I can't see. The shorter one, which I think we've got to stop there, was um, giving the lad in the striped top a good battering. The lad in the striped top was not going towards him. He was trying to break up the fight. With the camera's help, the two men who started the fight are heading to the cells. 
these two chaps who we believe are victims, um, the cuffs have been taken off them. The police will be told to them getting their account for a crime report. Um, and these are our suspects up here that have been detained. From here, we, we're looking to get a, bit, a bigger view of the thing. We've seen what's happened prior to police arrival, what happens when they get there, and we'll see what happens after. He was encouraged, I think, by the fact that the other lad wasn't fighting back. It was making him feel more brave as he co continued to punch him. People don't realise the dangers. You know, you see these films where people bash out at each other, all get up and walk away. Well, one punch can be fatal. So who knows? Maybe it'll save someone's life. All too often, drunken violence breaks out without warning. Police can't be everywhere, so that's when CCTV comes into its own. After a man is kicked out of a club in Huntingdon, a mass brawl leads to more than 50 people fighting in the street, all recorded on CCTV. And it was no one off. A picturesque market town by day, Huntingdon was becoming closer to the Wild West after dark. Night after night, fight after fight, Huntingdonshire's CCTV operators watched in horror as trouble flared across the county. It was only a matter of time before somebody got seriously, seriously hurt or even killed. Um, I, I mean, if you've got somebody on the floor and you're kicking their head, that can go, as you can imagine, go seriously wrong. Supervisor Richard Burnett's CCTV cameras were kept busy by one club in particular. Unbelievably, um, it, it accounted for about 70% of the uh, violent alcohol-related crime across the whole district. Uh, and this place was only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, so you can imagine how, uh, how big the problems actually were there. Violence outside the club got steadily worse. Then one Saturday night, Richard watched a really nasty fight unfold live on CCTV. A couple of officers turned up to, to deal with the problem. Unfortunately, once the blood's up, there, there were a lot of people that just didn't care whether there were police there or not. There were a couple of people that were knocked out completely sparko. And it ended up with pretty much every officer in the district uh, being called to this one thing. It was so bad that it affected the operator. She was still shaking the morning after, and it couldn't go on like that. Richard was determined to reclaim his town. Working closely with police, he compiled CCTV footage which showed the worst of the violence. Even I've, I've seen it several times and I still find it a bit difficult in places. The aim was to shock people into action. Just the level of violence that these people are, are doing to each other. You wouldn't treat any your worst enemy like this, never mind people you don't even know. And who does that to people? <laughs> Richard presented the 30-minute horror show to the local council. When they saw this footage being played, their, their jaws just dropped. And the overwhelming response was, never again in Huntingdon would this sort of happen. Uh, and, the, and the club was subsequently lost its licence and, and was closed down. The impact was immediate. With the problem club shut down, violent crime across the county dropped significantly. And for Richard and his team, watching the cameras at night, became a less harrowing job. Huntington at night is a lot nicer place to come to. Uh, it's a nice place to visit, nicer place to socialise. And we are seeing a, a bit of an upturn in people coming into the town. While CCTV helps tackle drunken violence, it also plays a vital role in catching even more sinister criminals. Stopping the gangs who terrorise our streets with violent turf wars. And putting the guilty behind bars when the innocent get caught in the crossfire. Three years ago, the importance of CCTV in the fight against crime was tested by the most serious crime of all. Murder. St Paul's Carnival in Bristol draws revellers from all over the country. In 2011, 
21-year-old Rico Gordon drove down to Bristol to enjoy the carnival with his sister and other family members. His mother was at their home in London. He was a special, very special person, very um, loving and kind. Rico was never involved in any gangs. He hated anything to do with gangs or, or violence of any kind. By now, it was the early hours of the morning, and Rico was drinking in the coach house pub, which you can just see behind me. Whilst he was in there, an argument broke out. Inside the pub, two sets of gang members, all from London, were squaring up. The atmosphere became so charged, the lights came on and the pub was closed. CCTV inside catches one gang leaving. The rest of the 200 partygoers followed, including Rico Gordon, who lingered outside talking to friends. A CCTV camera outside catches Rico crossing the road. He wanders out of view, oblivious to the violence that's about to end his life. Moments later, two men appear and a gun battle erupts. A third man emerges from the shadows, firing more shots. Innocently caught in the crossfire, a stray bullet hits Rico in the head. Just after four o'clock in the morning, I had a phone call and I woke up straight away because I thought it was Rico that was outside and he couldn't get in. So I answered the phone straight away and then I heard my daughter in the background shouting, breathe Rico, breathe Rico. And I just, I just collapsed, you know, I had the phone call. <laughs> Despite the efforts of paramedics, Rico Gordon died at the scene. A murder investigation was launched. It quickly became clear that the CCTV footage could hold the key to identifying the murderers. A CCTV manhunt began, led by Detective Sergeant Sim Cryer. My initial thoughts when I saw that footage was that the quality of the footage, because it was night time and the position of the cameras, was going to be difficult to identify the individuals from that particular footage. So I knew we'd have our work cut out. DS Cryer's team were desperate to follow the movements of the three gunmen directly after the murder. Officers trawled through hundreds of hours of footage from over 60 different cameras. The key to it is to try and stay focused, trying to track those people um, further away to see if we could get some better images of them. First, the team fixed their sights on the gunmen seen ducking from a hail of bullets and running off down the street. We've got a, a lone gunman who's got himself separated from his group and he's now wandering the back streets. Shortly after, footage from another camera catches the same gunman running into a side street. But then he seemed to disappear. The investigation was stalling. They had no names, no witnesses and no murder weapon. There was every possibility the killers would escape justice. Then one of the CCTV team made a vital breakthrough. Footage from a jeweler shop camera showed a man loitering suspiciously. You're thinking, well, is it the gunman? The clothing looks different. But as you watch that footage and you see it on a number of different systems over the, the, the couple of days that it took to piece his movements together, we could see that he was looking really agitated and we got more and more confident that this was our gunman. Having stood on the corner for a little while, he walks towards the camera and disappears again into the, into the back streets. Convinced they had their man, they tracked his movements with more CCTV until the point where he was eventually picked up by other members of the gang. The police now had a good image of the man and were closing in on him. Working very long hours at that point, trying to piece it all together. And as a team, putting different layers of evidence together, it was a really satisfying moment. In the hunt for the second gunman, all the team had to go on was a blurry image. Here he comes. Then, a hundred miles away in London, a man limped into a hospital with bullet wounds, once again captured on CCTV. He said that he'd been shot at a party in London, and when we made inquiries at that location, there'd been no party, there'd been no shooting, so we knew that he was telling lies. Comparing the two sets of footage, 
DS crier was sure where this man had got his injuries. And wanted to distance himself from the incident in Bristol. Um, and that was because he was one of the gunmen. The man was identified as Raquel Adams. Soon after, the face of the other gunman caught on camera was recognized as Shaka Anderson. Both were arrested and charged. The third gunman was never found, but in June 2012, the trial for Rico Gordon's murder began. When it comes to gangs and things like that, obviously people out of fear are frightened to come forward and talk. But Rico was such a good boy that he must, he must get justice. More than 100 CCTV clips were shown to the jury in a trial lasting five weeks. We've got this incident captured on CCTV. You've got to squeeze it for every bit of evidence you can get. And I think we did that, and we built a case with the CCTV being the backbone. In August 2012, Shaka Anderson and Raquel Adams were found guilty of murder and given life sentences. Coming up... It's the end of a raucous night in Chester when a lone figure causes concern. And CCTV helps a hero cop take on two determined thieves. Um, I'd be surprised if a lone officer can, you know, apprehend the two offenders. It's 4 a.m. on a Sunday morning in Chester. For CCTV operator Paul, it's the graveyard shift. Mm. While most people are in bed, Paul and his colleagues have a long night ahead of them. The remaining the focused is the biggest part of it. Back to An awful lot of people can't do that. Report, it can become, you know, can become a difficult task. Paul's watching the last revellers stumbling home through the city centre. He spots one woman looking rather unsteady on her feet. Um, she does appear a bit worse for wear. Um, so I'll just see what she, where she goes and... She is drunk, although she's making good progress. She's stopped at the lights. She seems aware of cars and the like. It's becoming clear she's too drunk to get home alone. Two passers-by stop to help. Paul decides not to take any chances. Can we control street pastors? He calls the street pastors, a volunteer group of good Samaritans looking out for pub casualties who need a helping hand. Uh, she has got very high heels on. It might be that a pair of flip-flops will help her get home. They carry water, they carry blankets, they carry flip-flops. She might not want the help. She might not need God's help, but she certainly got it. There's worrying news from the street pastors. The woman's proving difficult to deal with. And we're trying to get her to go home, but um, she's quite agitated and quite aggressive. If the street pastors struggle much more than they currently are, I might suggest contacting the police to see if they can, you know, help. Camera control to any 5 one There's a, an extremely drunken female who keeps stumbling in the road. Uh, street pastors are with her. They're just asking for a bit of a assistance. Over. Being a good Samaritan has its drawbacks. She's just been sick all over the street past her. The police arrived just in time. With the woman still uncooperative, they decide enough is enough. After everybody tried to help her, but she was arrested for her own sake because she was a danger to herself. And that was because she's, she, you know, she's gone out and she's had too much to drink. We don't want to get people locked up for being drunk. And we really don't. And unfortunately, I think sometimes alcohol does release the beast in us. Under cover of darkness, criminals grow bold, thinking no one can see them. Paul's monitoring a closed pub where a burglar alarm's been set off. 
Uh, so we could put a camera on the pub, we've got good coverage, and we'll monitor their premises. Two suspicious figures appear. Camera control 5-1, uh, we've just observed two males approach the Georgian Dragon. Um, they're climb currently climbing through one of the windows on the left-hand side of the property. Uh, can't see whether they've smashed it, but there's certainly two males. Uh, they're inside the property now. I can just see them through the window. A third figure appears on Paul's screen. It's a police officer. A troll has arrived. He's all on his own, so we're going to... He's just coming to the window they've got in. The solo cop gets his pepper spray out. He's gassed one, taken him down, got him into custody. Uh, we'll try and keep an eye, make sure that the other male doesn't get away. OK, so we're using the camera to see what the other male does. Um, I'd be surprised if a lone officer can, you know, apprehend the two offenders although he's just turned back up with his gas. He's taken him down. Despite being handcuffed, the first burglar's desperate to get away. The, the other guy's now trying to run off. This cop's determined to snare them both. Against the odds, both burglars are arrested. A very good police officer uh, doing a, a very good thing. He's managed to apprehend two burglars on his own. Uh, we've been able to monitor him for safety purposes, and it's a, a very good stop for the police and for us. With dawn approaching, it's almost the end for Paul's shift. I'm starting to struggle now. I've been, I've been, I've been doing this for what? Far too long. Far too long. But some people seem determined to stay out all night. Paul spots a man taking a power nap. We just observed a male asleep in the phone box. Just concerned for his safety. We just asked the patrol to go and check him out with Sergeant Andy Burridge on his way. For the final party goers, the man's proving quite the attraction. You can't miss him, Andy. He's leaning up against the phone asleep. Fucking out of the Oh, dear me. Oh. Sergeant Andy sees straight away why the man's been the butt of so many jokes. No one needs to see that at this time in the morning. Is he trapped? Ah. Time for a wake up call. Good morning. Good morning. Come on out of the telephone box. Why do you really want to use the phone again? You've just shown your backside to all and sundry through that window. No one needs to see that. You can do, public place. Get your backside. That's fine, but we've all seen your backside. So what? Well, no one needs to see it, it's offensive. We were concerned for his safety. Um, I don't think he appreciated our concern. Um, I think he likes attention, so we're not going to give him much more. As dawn breaks, some of Chester's drinkers are waking up with more than just a hangover. There were seven arrests made on race day in the city centre. With the help of CCTV, it was a successful operation looking after thousands of partygoers. The heroic copper who took down two suspected burglars received a reward for his bravery. Some people have a problem with CCTV, but from what I've seen, there's no better way to catch a criminal than by getting them caught on camera. <laughs>